The Akatsuki are probably the most popular and also the best known anime organization, next to perhaps the competition with Team Rocket. Each member is unique and has its own fanbase. But who were they and what were the motivations for joining this organization? So let's go through them all. Starting with the leader. No, of course, the question is, who is the leader? Yahiko? Nagato? Obito? Or is it Zetsu? Hmm... Let's start with Obito. Obito was a shinobi from Konoha Gakure, teamed with his great lord Rin and Kakashi and probably the most awesome sensei you could ever have, Minato. Kakashi was always a motivation for him to improve. And Rin? Yeah, he would really do anything for her. He wanted to carry her on his arms. Wait a minute, that's what he did! But I think he imagined it a little differently. Well, Unfortunately, Stonehail was very effective against him, which is why he almost died. And why Kakashi got his Sharingan. But he survived that and wasn't saved by Madara just out of kindness, but he wanted Obito to continue his plan and when the time came, bring Madara back to life. After Obito saw that love literally goes through the stomach, into the afterlife, he had also considered the plan acceptable to get together with Rin again. But sucks to be you Madara! He wanted to carry out the plan, but without Madara. He's just become a bit of a psycho, but who wouldn't be cracked by what he's been through? And definitely his ability with the Sharingan should be mentioned. Without Kakashi, his abilities are absolute OP. And the best part is that it's not even the eternal Mangekyou Sharingan, but the ordinary Mangekyou Sharingan. Which he doesn't seem to go blind from either, no matter how often he uses the shit. He created Akatsuki with the Amagakure orphans to the extent that we actually knew it. He had no ties to anyone else from the organization. It was nothing personal, just business. With the help of the other members, he wanted to capture and seal all the bijous. The fact that they all died in the end was of little interest to him and Itachi's death had even pleased him, because otherwise the fox wouldn't have been approved for shooting. As Toby, he just trolled around and wasn't really liked by any of the other members. I think that was also the first real fan theory which also proved to be true. Yeah, it wasn't that hard to turn Toby into Obito, but still. When he pretended to be Madara in front of the others, he got plus 100 respect. He was killed by Kaguya when he wanted to be one of the good guys again and realized his mistakes. To be honest, that was a really good ending for him. Zetsu is fucking creepy! After all, he more or less came out of nowhere. No other Otsutsuki was able to create one like that. Nobody knows how exactly he was created. He was just there. Oh yeah, and he eats humans to eliminate traces. Did Madara copy that from him when he bit off a piece of Hashirama? Because he wanted to reach his goal through Madara. Funny that Zetsu manipulated Madara, Madara then Obito and Obito then Nagato. Zetsu served in the organization more as a scout and as I said before, a tracker. After Akatsuki died and Zetsu thus no longer had to worry about lunch, he also then retrieves the rings. Whose meaning was not officially clarified. In itself, Zetsu only abused Akatsuki and the others to get Kaguya back. With Madara I think he would have been even better off, but hey. He's probably still alive and sealed together with Kaguya. Yahiko was a child who had lost his parents in the war and had met Nagato and Conan in the meantime. During this time, the three of them were trained by Jiraiya. He always trusted his friends very much and always appreciated them. After all, he stole fruit for them. He was the original official leader of Akatsuki. However, after what he experienced during the war, he can't trust strangers very much. After all, when Obito and Zetsu came to bring Nagato into the plan, Yahiko just sent them away. Yahiko was also like a big brother to Nagato. He was already slightly damaged by the war, of course. And when someone has been to war and has minimal intellect, he naturally wants there to be peace. To achieve this, he wanted to become the leader of the village, thus protecting the people. After his death, he passed his dreams on to Nagato. He died at the hands of Nagato, but of his own free will. After the pact with Hanzo, he directly betrayed the three. That bastard. Then Hanzo gave them the choice whether Yahiko or Conan should die. So Yahiko jumped into Nagato's kunai. Well, if only Yahiko hadn't trusted Hanzo so much. 
Yaiko's body was minimally abused by Nagato's abilities and thus became what many call pain. This allowed Jiraiya to wax nostalgic before Nagato killed him with the pains. He is actually the reason why Jiraiya trained the three orphans. Having a Rinnegan makes a damn good impression though. He is also the man who was behind the pains. After Yahiko died, he wanted to continue his plan to bring peace to the world by using all the bejewels to create a weapon that would shatter entire villages just like that. Of course, he would probably have to use the weapon once so that people would know that he really has it. So rip village, which should go for it completely. Peace through fear and lots of death. Yay! What a crappy plan! An actually shy boy who showed a different side after the death of Yahiko. He became quite ruthless and didn't really care about anybody except for Conan. After the fight against Hanzo, he also can't walk by himself anymore, which is why he is in this very more than impractical looking wheelchair. Since the pains also suck for abnormally much chakra, he has also been minimally emaciated. Of course, he made Yaiko's dead body to the strongest body of pain. But no one knows why the others had to have orange hair now too. He couldn't really digest Yaiko's death. Why didn't he bring him back with Rinne Rebirth when he brought back every disease from Konoha? I don't know. As a leader, he was actually very good. He actually cared about the other members of the Akatsuki as well. Although no one knew about his true body except for Obito, Zetsu and Conan, he still trusted the others. Everyone also listened to him as a leader and no one doubted his decisions. You just don't mess with someone who has the Rinnegan. This world should now pain. Says it all, I think. He wanted to traumatize and terrorize the whole world until everyone suddenly understood each other. Genius plan. But how can you blame him? After all, he had developed a kind of god complex through the Rinnegan and was a little disconnected from reality. After Naruto's glorious talk no jutsu, he realized that he had screwed up quite a bit after all and then brought everyone back with the Rinne Rebirth jutsu. But that cost him so much chakra that he died because of it. After he died, Obito took all the strings in his own hands and revealed his identity as Madara. Conan, the only female Logia user from all of Naruto. However she can do it. She just can do it. If it doesn't work out with Akatsuki, she can always sell her paper. While Pain has taken on the role of a god, Conan has taken on the role of an angel. An angel which was feared by the inhabitants. She is rather quiet in herself and keeps a low profile. So she never said anything at the meetings. She just wanted to support Yaiko and Nagato. That's really all there is to it. After a really good fight against Obito, she unfortunately died. Actually, she wanted the dead bodies of her, Yaiko and Nagato to lie next to each other when the three of them died. That was her last big wish. Well, things turned out badly because Obito didn't make it happen. Now Yahiko is lying there all alone. The Mr. Krabs of the Naruto universe from Takeyakure who would do anything for money. Truly anything. All of them probably dead from Supernatural and a pretty cold guy who probably took the A Hard 4 campaign a bit too literally. Since he's also such a financial guru, he clears up all of the Akatsuki's finances completely on his own. And he killed all of his old partners until he then realized with Hidan that it doesn't really work with him since he can't really die. Oh yeah, and if Kakuzu owes you money, you can definitely count on getting that back. Maybe he'll take your heart away or something, but he's very reliable when it comes to money. Money! On the one hand, and on the other hand, he was punished by his village after the defeat against Hashirama. Of course, he couldn't really understand that since he was the only one who had the balls to go against Hashirama at all. That's why he broke out of prison and was a Nukinen ever since. So it's also pretty obvious to go to Akatsuki. There he can then hunt people with high bounties who will surely have good hearts. So a clear win-win situation. After a damn awesome fight against Kakashi, Ino and Shoji, he lost to Naruto who wanted to try the Rasen Shuriken on him. At least Kakashi gave him the final blow. Yeah, nothing happened here.
The man who would have torn down everything in the Punch and Judy show at school. The best and most creative puppeteer and puppet creator from Sunagakure. As a child, he didn't really have friends, his parents died early and so he found it logical to hang out with puppets. Right? After all, they don't have feelings and they never grow old. Then, by putting whatever that is there into a puppet, he became a puppet himself and thus immortal. The only weak point is then just that thing. He also has no feelings. How could he without a soul? At the age of 14, he was able to kill the strongest Kazekage, even if it's assumed that this was somehow an ambush or something else. Just like Hakuzu, he was a Nukinin expelled from his own village. Quite understandable, if you kill the leader of the village. To continue to create strong puppets, he must fight against strong opponents. Seeing this chance in Akatsuki was pretty good. He died in the fight against Grand Machio and Sakura, though he more or less did it on purpose at the end. If he had continued to fight seriously, then they would definitely be dead. His body is used by Kankuro, although I think the puppet of the third Kazekage is much better. Art is an explosion! Some in real life probably take that a bit too literally. The assassination and explosives expert from Iwagakure, Deidara. In his palms he has two mouths completely with teeth and tongue. Why? I don't know. But with that you can definitely understand why so many women like him. Deidara didn't want to join at first. But Akatsuki wanted him to join, so they sent Itachi, Kisame and Sasori to him. And they gave him an absolutely fair chance. If he wins a fight against Itachi, he doesn't have to join. If he loses, he has to join. After Itachi gave him the quickest and most effective beating of his entire life, he had to join and well, has pretty much hated the Sharingan and the Uchiha and especially Itachi ever since. He blew himself up in the fight against Sasuke. He was just dead. Jusoro Biva was a former member of the Seven Shinobi Swordsmen from Kirigakure. When he and the others got their asses kicked by Dai and apparently four of the seven died there, Biva became a Nukunin and joined Akatsuki only to die fighting the Yondai Megmitsukage. It's not really known why he joined. I guess that he was expelled from the village after the failure against Dai, just like Kakuzu. As I said before, he met his death in the fight against the Mitsukage. He was occupied by Kizama after his death, so that Itachi would continue to have a partner. Here we have the only fishman from Naruto, namely Kizama. Of course, he must also come from Kirigakure. It is said that he has as much chakra as a bijou, which is why he was also called the tailless bijou. Strange that he was called tailless, although sharks are known to have two dicks. And he can fuse with the sword Samihada, although this raised questions in me again. Especially Killer B should be able to do that somehow or not. Well, he's a pretty brutal guy who not only likes to fight, but also enjoys needlessly torturing his opponents. The only reason why he is cool with Itachi and obeys Pain's orders is because he respects stronger people and is loyal to them. Only the law of the strongest counts with him. We don't know that 100%, but it's probably that he recognizes Obito, or rather he thought it was Madara, as the stronger one and therefore likes to serve him. Yep, just as brutal as you can imagine. He killed himself by letting sharks eat him. Is nothing happened. Everybody knows him. Everybody loves him. Incredibly talented guy. Unfortunately also an incredibly sick guy. A leader of the Enbus at the age of 13 and is known to have wiped out the entire Uchiha clan along with Obito. All except his little brother Sasuke. Him he had in a genjutsu for almost 514,300 times to see how Itachi killed their parents. Is this brotherly love? After it all came out what a man of honor he is and that he is actually a good guy, he only became more popular. And then when he broke up the Edo Tensei in the war, which was a completely turnaround in the war, he only became even more popular. He went to Akatsuki to watch over Konoha and Sasuke. He had to deal with Obito that as long as he worked for the Akatsuki, he would leave Konoha alone. Just like Danzo and Hiruzen leave Sasuke alone. He wanted to die in the fight against Sasuke and that's exactly what happened. 
After his death, Obito had no more obstacles to catch the QB and influence Sasuke. Which of course Itachi didn't want to happen and that's why he almost managed to burn Obito. Oh yeah, and legends say that the Russian probably killed himself because of Itachi's death. Actually, nothing is really known about him. Only that his name translated means devotion, which fits him because he has given himself completely to Akatsuki. Also not really known, looks like a Buddha. Translated, his name also means Big Buddha Statue. He was very aggressive before meeting Nagato, Conan and Yaiko and also robbed villagers. Then after he met the three and worked with them, he was very calm and quiet. Oh, and he was in love with Conan. They really liked the idea about peace, how Yahiko and Nagato wanted to achieve it and they wanted to help them. After the peace agreement with Hanzo, Obito and Zetsu killed the three. After the three were killed, the Akatsuki as we know it was founded. With the nice coats with the red cloth on them. The first real main villain from Naruto, who was the biggest threat for many seasons. He was one of the Sunin, wanted to master all the jutsus in the world. Orochimaru and the sexy no jutsu. Yeah, that would probably sexy as hell. He was a candidate for the position of the fourth Hokage, which he didn't get because of his evil nature. And whereupon he wanted to destroy the whole village and just founded his own village. He was a Nukinin and sought refuge in the Akatsuki. He wanted to get the Sharingan which he wanted to steal from Itachi. Which of course is a damn stupid idea what he also noticed damn fast. So he leaves Akatsuki and wanted to get Sasuke. He's actually still alive but as I said he left Akatsuki and just took his ring with him. A man from the rather unknown village of Yugakure. He was a follower of Yashinism and was thus immortal thanks to enough sacrifices. He was an absolute psycho who liked to inflict pain on other people and sacrifice them for his god. That's a little bit strange. For himself the Yashin religion is the absolute number one, also he would like to kill all from Akatsuki and sacrifice to his god. Then there is Kakusu who is also supposed to be immortal somehow and that interested him about him. Of course he would also like to see Kakusu dead. So it's good that both of them are immortal, otherwise they would just kill their partners all the time. After losing the battle against Shikamaru and not being able to sacrifice anything to his god, he died with a very high probability. Probably his god is sad now or something, I don't know. Alright, that's it again for this video. Who's your favorite Akatsuki? Feel free to write it in the comments below. And I will see you again next time, so take care my friends.